Hey guys, welcome back. Today I've got a personal update for you, basically about stuff that's going on in my life. So if you're not interested in those type of videos, I'm gonna link another video up here that you might be interested in. First things first, uh, yesterday, yesterday we had to put our pug Maximus to sleep and that was absolutely horrible. So he's been having issues probably at least for a year, maybe a little bit longer. And one of the things the vet told us that we should do is help him to lose some weight. So we helped him lose like three or four pounds, which is significant in a small dog. And I thought he was doing better, but then maybe six weeks ago, he like, like randomly, he started peeing on people. Like he would get, I thought it was because he was excited and old and he lost bladder control. So I told the vet about it. Um, because of some other episodes, the vet decided maybe he was having uh, dementia. So we put him on some anti-dementia meds for dogs. I don't remember what exactly it is, but it's a $120 pill and it's like a white pill and you like pop it out of a blister pack and give it to him once a day in the morning and it's supposed to help. Um, unfortunately for us, it didn't help and um, things just seem to be progressively getting worse. Uh, he accidentally peed on the groomer. He accidentally peed on my mother-in-law. He accidentally peed on my stepmom. <laughs> like he just was accidentally peeing on people a lot. He was having accidents in the house. And so we kept trying to figure it out and work with him. He wasn't consistently having a problem like, like he just all the time. It's just, it was kind of random as to when it would happen. And so we put him on this medication that was supposed to help. I was just like, it's not helping, it's not helping. And he's had this cough that sounds like congestive heart failure cough because it's the cough my grandmother has. He's had it for over a year and everything. And he just seemed like he was getting worse and worse. And about two weeks ago, things seemed to be really bad for him. Um, he like, I had just taken him outside to go to the bathroom and he came back in. And then he walked by me in the living room, just peeing as he was walking towards his bed. Like he had no idea what he was doing. A couple times I, when I would take him out to the backyard to go to the bathroom and I would think he was done and then he would follow me back in the house. He would poop the entire way going back into the house like he just had no clue as to what was going on. And um, yesterday morning, like I already had an appointment set up for yesterday afternoon to take him to the vet because I was like, he's just not doing well. There's got to be something else we can do. And I mean, Max was Dave's baby, like his his baby the way Phaedra's my baby so he really really loves his dog and so uh, yesterday morning I found him like laying down on one of the beds and there was like a puddle of pee and like some white frothy stuff and I'm like okay I think he had another seizure because last year he had a seizure and I took him to the emergency vet at like 2 a.m. in the morning or something and that vet told me that she strongly suspected that he had a tumor and he wouldn't live a year. So of course like all of that information went to my vet and he had it and it was kind of in the back of our heads but we weren't really thinking about it. Um, it came up whenever my vet gave us the anti-dementia medication because he's like well maybe he has a tumor maybe that's what's causing these problems. Uh, the reason we ended up not getting an MRI for him is because my vet had explained that yes, you can get an MRI to see whether or not your dog has a tumor, but if he has a tumor, there's absolutely nothing they can really do about it because they don't do surgery to remove tumors from the brain for dogs, or at least that's how my vet explained it to me. So when I brought him in, uh, Dave and I brought him in yesterday morning and we said, hey, this is what's been going on. Plus for like the past three days, he hadn't really been interested in his food. He didn't want to eat. And this dog lived to eat. Like he would get so excited when he would eat his food that after he ate it, he would run around the house doing little victory laps and then like throw himself in his bed and kick his little feet up in the air, super happy. Um, about a week ago, he stopped playing with Phaedra he didn't really seem to notice me, but like he, you know, he loved Dave. So every time we saw Dave, he would get excited. When we had people over, he would be really excited and want to see the people. And then like he would accidentally pee on him. So anyway, we told the vet, these are all the things that have happened since we last saw you a couple weeks ago. And we didn't feel like the medication was helping. It seemed like he's get, it was getting worse. And my vet had a very frank conversation with us. He said, you know, I feel like his quality of life is really gone and if he's not eating and he doesn't really know you and he's not playing with food playing uh, playing with the other dog he's not playing with toys he's not you know doing all these things it may be time for you to consider putting him to sleep because he's not really having a good quality of life and Dave lost it and started just bawling which I completely understand I was trying not to cry so I could be supportive for him but I'm like you know 
sniffling and trying to, <laughs> trying not to just burst into tears because I'm just like, oh my God, this is so awful. Like I had this feeling when I woke up yesterday morning that maybe the vet would say this, but I was like, no, I'm just being paranoid. I don't think that's really gonna happen, but it did. He said it could be because of the brain tumor that we're finally just out of time. It could be that the brain tumor is causing some of the basic, you know, functions for Max to just not work properly. What that like how he just doesn't even he's not even aware that he's peeing or pooping because he, he can hold it if he's aware. He just can't if he's not aware. And the fact that he has, you know, no interest to eat food when he used to live for food, he's like, you know, it could just be the brain tumor is doing that if there's a brain tumor. So, you know, we sat there for probably about 10 minutes thinking about it, talking it over and finally decided that the vet was right and we should do it. And it's one of the hardest, if you've never had to put a vet, to, uh, if you've never had to put a pet to sleep, it's one of the hardest things I've ever done in my entire life. When I made the decision to put my cat Quasar to sleep, it, it was awful. It was devastating. But by that point, my cat Quasar wasn't eating. She wasn't drinking. She wasn't able to poop. And it was just like, she was ready, I guess, to go at that point. And um, it's awful. It's so fucking awful. It's so painful. And so when Dave made that decision and the vet, you know, said, I think you're making the right choice. And he explained about the procedure, which if you don't know anything about the procedure, I guess basically what they do is um, they let you hold your pet and they administer a shot that's a drug overdose of like barbiturates or something. So it's basically a very peaceful, euphoric way to go. And so... Dave was holding Max and I was sitting there with my hand on Dave as we said goodbye to him and Max just closed his eyes and relaxed and in some ways that was worse to watch than when I held I held my cat Quasar when she when I had this done for her I held her because I felt like I needed to be there for her through everything so that she would know she was loved and yeah doing that just it's so painful, but I feel like it's so important to do to your pets um, because you should be for them, be there for them when they when they have to take that final step. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just talking about it is making me so emotional. Um, so yeah, that that's what I did yesterday, and it was so painful to have to do and. It's really hard because it's one of those things I don't feel like people really talk about that, you know, it's great to have pets, but sometimes you have to make hard decisions for your pets, for their best interests, even though it kills you inside. Like realizing when you're being selfish and keeping the pet alive and you really should be thinking about what's best for them. So, so since I lasted one of these videos, I changed my hair. I went from having pink hair to blue hair. I've got different shades of blue going on. I have like this sort of dark denim blue in the front. I've got this like deep blue with violet undertones in like the middle. I've got this deep teal in the back and then I've got like this black layer underneath and I just had it like cut styled and had my roots like darkened to a like dark brown black color so it'll look better with my regrowth. But I absolutely love it. It's such a nice change. I wanted to do a different style than what I've been doing for forever and a day. So I went to my stylist with a couple different uh, pieces of inspiration and that's what we went with. I wanted the front actually to be like this lighter denim color, but I wasn't sure whether my hair would be able to do that because of the, the color that it was beforehand and I didn't want to have to bleach it again because I didn't want to have breakage. So this is what we ended up doing with it. And I really love it. I think it looks great. Next month, I'm going to be going to Cosmoprov in Las Vegas. So if any of you are going to be attending Cosmoprov, let me know so we can meet up and say hi. It is a professional event for it is a professional beauty event. So um, to get into the show, you have to meet a criteria, and you can check that out on their website. But I'm excited because I haven't been to Vegas since 2013, something like that. So it'll be interesting to see how that how that goes. Last but not least, my birthday is in a few days and because of that, I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for my YouTube fans only. I'm gonna be giving away these lipsticks from Urban Decay. In case you can't read the shades, they are Big Bang, Crank, Firebird, Jilted, Frenemy, Obsessed, PDA, Menace, Phone Call, and Psycho. And 
in this collection are some of my favorite, all, my all-time favorite shades, specifically Obsessed, Frenemy, Crank, and Menace. So I'm really excited to have this to give away. Urban Decay sent it to me. To enter to win the lipsticks, all you need to do is be a subscriber of my YouTube channel, Fear Nix, and leave a comment down below. That's it, I'm making it super simple. Normally I only do raffle copter giveaways, but I'm doing this one just for you guys. So yeah, anyway, that's what's going on with me. Please let me know what's going on with you. I'm sorry for getting really all teary-eyed and upset. Um, I'm sorry for crying on you guys, but it's just, it's really emotional and it's one of those things I don't feel like people really talk about. So I wanted to talk to you about it and tell you my experience. Anyway, thanks for watching.